If one's talking about the achievements of Benedict XVI's papacy, I think the, the thing I would single out as a success is his personal success. He was elected amidst uh, nothing uh, much short of dread on the part of liberal Catholics and the secular media who uh, had nicknamed him God's Rottweiler. In fact, he is uh, a, a kindly and mild person, uh, uh, easily the most approachable uh, head of department in the, in the Vatican under John Paul II. And although he took a tough doctrinal line, as a personal individual, he's extremely personable. It was felt that he couldn't possibly inhabit the celebrity style of papacy that his predecessor had pioneered. And it's true, he's a much more diffident personality. But if you measure uh, personal success in terms, say, of his visit to England in 2010, uh, the Catholic Church in this country was dreading what might happen when he came. There was so much press hostility and secularist hostility. In fact, it was a runaway success. People warmed to him, he spoke carefully, very intelligently and movingly, and uh, the address to uh, Parliament in Westminster Hall was a major and significant papal utterance. So I think that's the, the first thing to uh, say, that he, ha he defused fears that he would be some kind of uh, reactionary, uh, bigoted despot. On the other hand, many Catholics have been disturbed by the, what appears to be a rowing back from the achievements of the Second Vatican Council during his pontificate. He's emphasized that the Second Vatican Council, which transformed the Catholic Church in all sorts of ways, for example, by abandoning uh, Latin as the normal language of the liturgy, uh, but the Pope has emphasized its continuities with the immediate Catholic past. So he's played down its revolutionary character. And that has uh, validated and given uh, credence to uh, a, a fairly reactionary spirit in the church, which has distanced itself from many of the distinctive teachings and um, attitudes of the Second Vatican Council. He has gone out of his way to reach out to the schismatic Lefebvreist movement, uh, a movement which uh, everybody knows uh, is faithful to the old unreformed Tridentine mass. What people are perhaps less aware of or were till fairly recently is that that goes with a, a parcel of uh, pretty obnoxious opinions about religious intolerance, uh, in some cases anti-Semitism, uh, famously one of these bishops turned out to be a Holocaust denier. And Catholics have been puzzled and pained by the extent to which the Vatican has struggled to include these people in the Catholic Church while be behaving much more hostilely towards uh, dissident Catholics on the left. So I think many people feel that the uh, uh, Ratzinger papacy has um, authorized a resurgence of ultra-conservative positions within the church which are out of tune with the attitudes of most Catholics. And I suppose the great failure of the papacy, though I, I myself don't think it's a, a personal failure for the Pope, but of the institution more widely, is the clerical abuse business, which has led to a massive collapse of confidence on the part of ordinary Catholics in the hierarchy. I think not so much loss of confidence in the local clergy because by and large people are aware that the people responsible for sexual abuse are a small minority and they still, I think, by and large trust their local clergy. But there is a deep disillusion with the institutional reluctance to confront and deal with the issue in a, a frank and open way.